Hello, my name is Matt Clark, and I'm the commander of the Denver Police Department's Major Crimes Division. This critical incident debriefing is intended to provide you with information regarding an officer-involved shooting that occurred in the area of South Federal Boulevard and West Harvard Avenue in Southwest Denver on Wednesday, May 19, 2021. You are about to see relevant video footage and learn about other evidence and police procedures related to the case so you have an understanding of the details of this incident. The use of deadly force by a police officer demands a thorough investigation be completed. The Denver Police Department is committed to ensuring a full and timely investigation of these serious incidents. This allows for a comprehensive examination of the officer's actions to determine compliance with state statutes and department policies. In accordance with legislation passed in 2015, the investigation of police shootings in Denver are conducted by a multi-agency investigative team made up of members from the Denver and Aurora Police Department Homicide Unit, as well as the Denver District Attorney's Office. All critical incident investigations are actively monitored by the Office of the Independent Monitor. A word of caution, the images and information you are about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, there may be strong language used by those shown in the video. Viewer discretion is advised. On Wednesday, May 19, 2021, at approximately 6.45 p.m., the Denver Police Department received a 911 call regarding an individual with a knife on the east side of South Federal Boulevard near Harvard Avenue. The caller advised the male was under a tree and appeared to be cutting himself. Okay, and tell me exactly what happened. Uh, hey, 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 no! Hey! What's going on, there's sir? There's a guy that, there's a guy that, uh, got a razor knife and he's maiming himself right now. Officers Katie Phillips and Jordan Archuleta were promptly dispatched to this call. Both officers were wearing Denver police uniforms, and were driving marked Denver Police vehicles. The officers approached from the north and passed by the subject, who was later identified as 52-year-old Raul Rosas Zarsosa. As the officers drove past the subject, they recognized he was bleeding from his neck. The officers proceeded south one block to Vassar Avenue, where they turned around and stopped their vehicles. The officers intentionally blocked the northbound lanes of Federal Boulevard at Vassar Avenue, to prevent vehicle and pedestrian traffic from accessing the area while they worked to resolve this incident. The location where the officers stopped their marked police vehicles was approximately 105 feet away from where Mr. Rosas Zarsosa was located. The officers were concerned for Mr. Rosas Zarsosa and recognized he needed medical care for his self-inflicted injuries. At the same time, the officers observed Mr. Rosas Zarsosa was still in possession of the knife he was using to cut himself. When the officers exited their vehicles, they were both carrying less lethal tasers, and Officer Phillips was also carrying a less lethal pepper ball system. The less lethal pepper ball system is a tool that allows officers to attempt to de-escalate situations or gain compliance from subjects at greater distances. The system shoots spherical projectiles that are filled with capsaicin powder. The officers directed an uninvolved individual who was walking a dog back to their location so he could not be at risk. As the officers were developing a plan to safely approach Mr. Rosas Zarsosa, he stood up and directed his attention towards the officers. Mr. Rosas Zarsosa began approaching the officers at a steady pace while holding the knife in his hand. The officers gave clear direction to Mr. Rosas Zarsosa to stop and get back. Get back! Get back! Get back! Mr. Rosas Zarsosa disregarded this direction and continued on his path towards the officers, quickly closing the distance. Officer Phillips moved back to a location where a police vehicle was positioned between her and Mr. Rosa Sarsosa. Mr. Rosa Sarsosa continued walking towards the officers, ignoring their verbal direction. At one point, while Mr. Rosa Sarsosa was walking towards the officers, Officer Phillips utilized a less lethal pepper ball system to attempt to gain his compliance and de-escalate the situation. Officer Phillips discharged 10 pepper ball rounds at Mr. Rosa Sarsosa, striking him in the chest multiple times. Despite being struck by the pepper ball rounds, Mr. Rosas Zarsosa continued towards the officers. As Mr. Rosas Zarsosa came around the front of the police vehicles, Officer Archuleta discharged a less lethal taser. The taser was not effective in stopping Mr. Rosas Zarsosa because one of the two taser probes did not make contact with him. At about the same time the taser was deployed, Officer Phillips, 
who had transitioned from the pepper ball system to her duty handgun, discharged multiple rounds from her firearm. Mr. Rosa Sarsosa was struck by these rounds and fell to the ground. Mr. Rosa Sarsosa threw the knife he was holding to the side as he was on the ground. An ambulance was already at the location and provided prompt medical aid to Mr. Rosa Sarsosa. He was transported to the hospital where he was later pronounced deceased. Following a police shooting, any officers involved in the incident are separated and assigned to a supervisor once a situation is stabilized. Involved officers remain in the company of the assigned supervisor throughout the initial investigation of the incident. Through the investigation, it was determined that a total of five rounds were fired by Officer Phillips. At the scene, investigators recovered a red Milwaukee utility knife. This was the knife that Mr. Rosas Zarsosa used to cut himself and also the knife he held as he approached the officers. All officers assigned to uniform patrol duties in Denver have been issued body-worn cameras. These devices are generally worn at chest level by patrol officers and are capable of recording both audio and video. Prior to being activated by the officer, the body-worn camera maintains a 30-second video buffer. Once the officer activates the camera, the 30-second buffer video is captured and the camera starts recording both audio and video. It is important to note that a body-worn camera captures a general perspective of what is in the camera's view. However, this footage may or may not be what the officer actually saw or perceived. At times, an officer's movement or hand positioning may inadvertently block the camera's view. Additionally, the camera may not capture light in the same way as an officer's eye. Here is the relevant raw body camera footage that was captured by the involved Denver police officer's body-worn cameras. Again, viewer discretion is advised.
How about we take a... Get over here. We'll take a car up further. Get on this side of my car. Hey, hey, get back! Get back! Get back! Get back! Get back! Now! Just let him hold the air, hold the air. Stop! Stop! I got taser, I got taser, I got taser! You good? Back, he dropped the knife. He pushed. Get he back, tossed the back. knife. He tossed the knife. He tossed the knife. Hold on. He tossed the knife. Sits one Adam. We're Harvard and Federal. Got one suspect down. We need a bus. Code 10. All right. Officers are okay. He has tossed the knife. We need a bus. We need the EMS to move up. Are you good? Yeah. You okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Hold up. Sir, listen to me. Sir, sir. Sir, put your hands out to your side. Hands out to your side, on your stomach. Hands out to your side, hands out to your side on your stomach, hands sir. Out to your side. Hands out to your side. Hands out to your side. Hands out, hands to, out your to your side. We have cars coming now. We're gonna start taking them into custody. Sissy, glove up. Where's the gun at? He has a knife right there. Do a search right there on his backside. Stay on. Stay on for now to be your supervisor on. In my car. Secure your weapon. Did you shoot? I didn't shoot. I had a taser. No. He has a taser pro bottom, just so you know. Am I good to turn off follow. now? Wes, I need you to follow this ambulance, please. Uh, Am I good to shut off now? Yes. And recording sit in your car. All right. The Denver District Attorney will review the details of this incident and determine if the officer's actions were in compliance with Colorado law. After the District Attorney renders a decision, the Denver Police Department's Internal Affairs Bureau and Conduct Review Bureau will complete an administrative review of this case. The details of the case will be presented to a Use of Force Review Board, which is made up of community members and police command officers. This board will determine whether the actions of the Denver police officers were in compliance with the high standards expected of every Denver police officer related to policies, training, and tactics. For additional information regarding the investigation of critical incidents or the Denver Police Department's use of force policies, you may visit denvergov.org police. Thank you for taking the time to view this critical incident briefing.